so today, I'm going to be talking about an idea that is a little esoteric, um, that seems very far in the future, but I'm going to argue is actually something that is going to be soon relevant and um, will be very interesting, and, and I, I think people should be working on it. So the start of the story begins in 2014, where I started my crypto career building a derivatives exchange you know, here in the United States, based in New York, with the idea that we're going to build a regulated platform by the US government so that people will trade swaps, futures, options on this nascent crypto class in, in 2014. It was not a very large class at the time. So a lot of skepticism. It took us about seven years, and we managed to do it. Now, during that seven years, um, to take a break, I had side projects. So in my free time, I was thinking about things about um, this different type of cryptocurrency that really started with one question, which is that if Satoshi Nakamoto was looking to architect a cryptocurrency with very similar properties to Bitcoin, except he lived in an era where humanity was already multi-planetary, how would that look? Would it look different? Would it look the same? Would the non-page white paper have some adjustments? And after noodling about it over a little bit, I realized, that in fact, that there will be key differences. So I wanted to talk to some about some of those differences today. So quick primer, you know, one of the, you know, the main things that crypto is designed to do, sync ledgers across everybody in a distributed manner, so that we all have the, the equivalent ledger transactions in a distributed way. And you can see in the bottom left of the screen this is one of the famous um, diagrams that Satoshi put in his paper. You know, we have a block. It contains transactions underneath. The next one references the previous block, the hash of it in particular, and you go on and on. And this was designed very much for Earth scale. I can't imagine why Satoshi laboring on this for a long time. We'd even think otherwise. And one of the aspects of the blockchain that he put in is that on average, there's a 10-minute delay be between finding these blocks. Now, 10 minutes is a really good approximation on Earth when everything moves quickly. It gives plenty of time for a miner, once they find the block, to really broadcast it and everybody knows that it's right. And then we all move on. You know? And then it also gives the other miners the same thing. And then everybody on Earth, for the most part, has a very consistent blockchain and therefore consistent order of transactions that are happening. So the question about this is that, does it start to break down when we're doing solar system scale things in the sense that the speed of light starts to become an issue when you're trying to communicate in sync blocks? And so obviously, if you have a colony on Mars, if you have a city on the moon, then those things become an issue because, again, the fundamental role for Bitcoin is to make sure that we're all on the same page. So there are going to be some adjustments made because now we're talking about Sinking blocks and transactions at the solar system scale. Very different. So really quickly, um, you know, orbital mechanics and crypto to explain what I mean. You can see on the left here, on the right, there are two different diagrams of how Earth and Mars move over a 2.2 year period. Sometimes they're really far. You know, this is just how the orbits of Earth and, moves, Earth and uh, Mars work. I don't make the rules, by the way. This is just how it works. Um, sometime during that 2.2 period, they're really close. When you see how far they are here, the speed of light, and we can never exceed that, of course, is so long that it takes 44 minutes round trip to go from here back. That's the minimum you need, even if you're good at everything else, to make sure that the ledgers are synced between these two planets, these two worlds. When it's closer, you only need a six minute round trip delay. So the point is it varies over time. And we want to have a system and a cryptocurrency that understands that you set the block size to, to uh, the delay too long and you're wasting time. If you set it too short, then the Martians get the wrong ledger or an old one. And you know, that, that's, that's going to be an issue because it's no longer synced. You know, the Martians are busy. I don't think they'd be very happy if they didn't really understand all the transactions that were happening in between the two bodies. 
So one of the things I learned when I was a trader at an investment bank is that the right trade idea executed too early is the wrong idea. And so you have to ask yourself, that's that idea, theoretically fine, but why now? Is it too early stage? This is how the entrepreneur has to think at this point. And the reason I argue is that commercial spacecraft and the advances in there has been dramatic over the last 10 years. Crypto has grown a lot and evolved a lot over 10 years. In my opinion, commercial spacecraft and their advancements, especially a couple of these over here that, that, are, that are still in development, is even faster in that development. So all of a sudden, we're getting to the point where NASA, that didn't really have a plan to have a colony on either Moon or Mars, commercial companies are now pushing them where it's realistic that, that we have to start worrying about these issues. Who knows how many years? Let's call it 10. But it's an interesting thing to think about, and perhaps the infrastructure has to start being built soon. Trade-offs. OK, so the infrastructure I'm talking about designed for multi-planetary systems, solar system scale stuff, is not meant to be all things to all people. Right? We have many different payment systems here in the United States, in, in the world. You know, credit cards, very fast transactions per second, very hard to beat. But it's centralized. You have chargebacks. Wire, the Swift system and the wire system, a little bit of slow, but it's, you, know, you can't return it. Um, and it's centralized as well. No need to talk about anything about cash. I think a lot of us know like, the, the positives and negatives about that kind of thing. But that has its own trade-offs. And Bitcoin, of course, without a doubt, as discussed earlier in a lot of different conferences, will be kind of slow and not really be able to get the transactions per second, um, something like a credit card thing to do, with the advantage that it's decentralized. So we're willing to pay that, that cost so that we now have a decentralized system for this. So that's what I want to make clear. You know, all payment systems have kind of trade-offs, and the one I'm describing will, will too. It's not all things. So really, we can think about this new coin that's designed to, for the orbital mechanics as the, federal, the wire system for the solar system. It's closer to this, except it's crypto, and it's, it's designed to you know, really take into account everything else that happens. The other thing, the advantage like, that we, we should use crypto if we're thinking about moving value around the solar system is something that I always loved about the Bitcoin lore which is, it's apolitical. If you look at the right, you know, we see the hexadecimal representation of the Genesis block, you know, the absolute first block ever mined by Bitcoin by Satoshi. And he very cleverly, and a lot of people know this already, of course, but I'm illustrating this, I highlighted in red, makes a reference to um, this article in the London Times about how another bank, yet another bank, is getting bailed out. So this is during the 2008 financial crisis. I can sympathize. When I was in, um, during this period, I was a trader at a bank, and we saw so many people lining up at ATMs not being able to get their money out. It's fragile. There's a lot of fragility and brittleness in a lot of the systems we have. So having a crypto system, at least at the very least as an alternative, is not a bad idea. So it's always important that you know, there's a philosophy that it should be apolitical not at the whims of our politicians and then Federal Reserve, those types of concerns that a lot of people have and we're feeling now, you know, here in 2022. So what's the cool use case for this? Well, Mars needs a lot of stuff. You know, there are not a lot of buildings or infrastructure on Mars. Whether you're trying, like, trying to build a water plant or food supply, pipes, energy, and then all the, to the other, other mundane things like restaurants, and maybe hotels one day when we get, you know, get a little fancy. And if somebody out there who's an intrepid explorer from anywhere in the world, so they're apolitical, it could come from China, it could come from the United States, it could come from anywhere, finds a, like a mine here that looks promising or wants to build a certain building and needs investment from Earth, this type of coin, this type of infrastructure, anybody on Earth could send it to them and then they could get to work. So, Every single thing that needs work needs money. And to really accelerate this, we have to find the right means to, to really support the Martians. You know, they're busy. It's cold. <laughs> Life is hard over there. And so this is the end where I'm going to just discuss that. Um, I'm laying like the contours. There are a lot of details for like what it looks like to build a wire system for financial 
system for like the entire solar system scale. And, but I do think it's time to start thinking about it. And um, it has to be crypto-based, it has to be apolitical, and it has to take into account the unique orbital aspects so that we can time things correctly and be true to the idea that all ledgers should be synced, whether you're standing on Mars, Earth, or the Moon. And I hope a lot of people look into this. Um, and you know, we can really change a world, just one that we're not on yet. So thank you. <laughs>